Except there was one thing that he didn't account for. His daughter's curiosity. He made the robots too appealing. Don't get distracted! <laughs> begin, let me just rip off the band-aid now. We won't be finishing the timeline today. Don't worry, that part is already written, it is already recorded, it is just in the process of being edited. It is a hefty episode. It's also coming complete with a live talk back where we go back over everything from the past couple episodes, as well as having ourselves some very special guests. <laughs> I, I feel good about them. Like, I think that we've locked in on a lot of the answers here, but, uh, whoa, they're gonna raise a lot of discussion. Anyway, without any further ado, let's cover a chunk of the timeline that's a lot less controversial. Let's meet Mike. <laughs> William still wasn't back. Weird. Usually there was some sort of notice, a phone call, a post-it. Something. It's not like Michael and his father were- Hey yo, what the- Something had happened. If there was one thing Michael knew about his father, it was that he had contingencies. Safety checks. Backup plans. His father was a careful and guarded man. <laughs> Normally, his father kept his home office locked, but in the event of an unexpected, prolonged absence, Michael had been instructed to enter his father's office and look behind an empty set of shelves mounted in the corner of the room. He dragged himself over to the shelf in the corner, expecting to find an emergency contact list, a family safety deposit box. But what he actually found there was completely unexpected. Baba Bowie. Father, it's me, Michael. I did it. I found it. It was right where you said it would be. The shelf swung open and rev- But, but that was impossible. Hidden inside his childhood home was a secret entrance to an enormous underground science lair? It, it didn't make any sense. Seriously, it didn't make any sense. <laughs> Suddenly, the days of William being locked inside of his office made sense. He'd been here the entire time. Where was here, though? Was this Circus Baby's Entertainment and Rentals? No, this is Patrick. The Circus Baby restaurant always did seem to be a deeply personal project for Father. A failure of his that cut unusually deep. <laughs> was this his sister? William's baby girl? But how? Why? What was this place? storage containers, voice mimicking, parental tracking. And was that a child in Freddy's stomach? No, this is Patrick. Was his father collecting and experimenting on kids? <laughs> Were all the rumors that he'd heard throughout his past actually true? That the animatronics came to life at night? That there were murders done in all the pizzerias? That his father had somehow Bruh. been the prime suspect in all of it? Suddenly everything clicked. He frantically looked around the room, blinking human heads on poles staring back at him. Green eyes, his sister. Blue eyes, his brother. Closed eyes, his mom. Huh? All just staring. Oh. No, this is Patrick. Were those meant to be his sister? A replacement for her? A clone? Was William building clones of his sister? <laughs> they seemed to know him, after all. Is this the same person? No. No, he had to get them out of there. If this really was his sister, heck, if any of these things were human, souls, whatever remnant of the humans that they once were, they needed to be rescued. He would lead them. He would protect them. And finally, he would be able to forgive himself for the killing of his brother so many years- <laughs> But something is wrong with me. I should be dead. But I'm not. Excuse me, sir. I hope my horrible ugliness won't be a distraction to you. Not at all, boy! <laughs> Michael had to correct for the sins of his father. He had to make things right. Michael would burn Fazbear Entertainment to the ground. I mean, what else could you do when your skin was permanently purple? Michael's strategy was simple. He would apply for night security guard positions at the old, defunct pizzeria locations. That way, no one ever had to see him or smell him during his shift. <laughs> Over time, Mike worked his way through the old restaurants. The original pizzeria, the bigger, better Freddy Fazbear's. He spent weeks there looking for clues as to his father's whereabouts. And each time at the end of his week shift, he would then set the location on fire. <laughs> 
Mike applied for the job and was immediately handed the keys. Years of doing this had taught him that security guards rarely receive thorough security checks. They also liked how creepy Mike looked. They thought it was a costume. On theme for the job. What little thing? <laughs> For weeks, there was nothing. But just as Mike considered giving up, he received the call that he'd been waiting for for years. Jesse! Jesse, wake up! Jesse! No, this is Patrick. He rigged the wiring inside the building to misfire, and the dry, desiccated walls erupted in flames. It is finished. Somehow, through sheer force of will, Afton remained. He had survived, and Mike would need to find a new way of finishing off his father. We're talking about becoming a Fazbear Entertainment franchisee. Restaurant ownership and management. Something almost anyone can do with a limited degree of success. You are now... Connection terminated. It took a few nights, but eventually everyone was there. His father, the puppet, the robot spaghetti that had once violated his body. Huh? And to you monsters trapped in the corridors. Be still, and give up your spirits. They don't belong to you. For most of you, I believe there is peace, and perhaps more, waiting for you after the smoke clears. Although for one of you, the darkest pit of hell has opened to swallow you whole. So don't keep the devil waiting, old friend. And with that, it was over. The Afton legacy died with all of them trapped inside of a literal box. As the flames danced around the office, Mike, for the first time in decades, was happy. <laughs> Although the darkest pit of hell was... What was this place? How did he get here? He called out into the silence. No, this is Patrick. <laughs>